Good morning, everybody from Costa Rica. Welcome to our webinar today. Uh, today it will be all about the experiences Costa Rica offers to its visitors. I'm very glad you joined us for this third webinar in our series. Um, in our first webinar, we talked about the new immigration conditions and sanitary protocols for trips to Costa Rica. And last week, we shared four itineraries following some tendencies we think will get stronger within the following months and gave you an overview on our product offer. And very soon, you will find the videos of all these three webinars on our website. So first of all, I would like to do a short sound check again. Can everybody hear me well? Maybe somebody could just write me a short, okay, yeah, I can already see that everything seems all right. My name is Sandra Halm. Um, from Ara Tours in Costa Rica. If you should have any questions during the presentation, please just write them down in that question tool and at the end of the presentation I will get back to them. And of course in general I'm always very glad to receive your feedback on sales at aratours.com. So then let's start. Uh, today we'll talk about the natural attractions of our country that mainly motivate our potential visitors to come over. Then we will have a look on the five top activities per region, talk about our new product line ARA experiences and discover the niches or special interests we're strong at. Let's start with the volcanoes. There are more than 100 volcanoes all along the central mountain range that crosses the country from the north to the south and only five of them count as active currently. This is the Rincón de la Vieja uh, a volcano right in the north of the country then the famous Arenal around the village of La Fortuna, the Boas and Irasu volcanoes near the capital San Jose and Turrialba <clears throat> next to Irasu. So we will have a look on each of them and see how our clients can actually discover them. The Rincón de la Vieja is currently together with the Turrialba volcano among the most active volcanoes. The national park is still open to the public normally as the loop trail is located at the foot of the volcano. Um, there was a trail towards the crater before, but it has been closed for several years now. The loop trail leads along two beautiful waterfalls and some volcanic uh, appearances like this kind of bubbling mud hole. And it takes about two hours. The National Park is open from Tuesday to Sunday from 8 to 3 p.m. The Arenal volcano is experiencing a low activity or even rest phase for the last nine years now. So all you can currently observe at the peak is some clouds. However, um, it's so beautiful showing up in the flat landscape that the region is still a highly visited and exciting region with many possible activities as we will see later. The highlights of the National Park are the ancient lava fields at its foot and more than 400 year old cyber tree. There are some four different trails to choose from or to combine to walk about two hours in the National Park. And there are some beautiful viewpoints towards the peak of the volcano and also towards the Arenal Lake. There are some neighbor reserves uh, with longer and more challenging trails towards the cold lava stones. So actually clients may choose which level of difficulty they prefer. The park is open daily from eight in the morning to four in the afternoon. Now the Poise volcano was quite active within the last two to three years and even throughout ashes and stones and that's why they actually closed the park during one and a half years and it just reopened last year now under more severe security measures 
the entrance fee, for example, has to be bought online. Visitors receive um, an exact arrival time for their visit. The visit is limited to just 20 minutes at the crater, and each visitor has to wear a helmet. Uh, the only permitted trail is the one towards the crater. Uh, there was another one, a longer trail through the cloud forest, which was very beautiful, but this is actually not accessible. Because of its relatively high activity and complicated purchase procedure, we actually don't include the visit uh, to the National Park in our programs anymore. However, if you have individual, individually traveling guests who would like to visit the park, they can just follow the mentioned guidelines and organize the visit themselves. This is the Irasu volcano, which actually took a little bit the place of Boas since it ha had been closed. Its activity level is quite low and stable, and therefore it can be visited without any prior reservation. You just get there and buy your park ticket at the entrance. The trail also leads towards the crater, and it's a kind of dark sanded moon landscape you will observe over there. With its 3,000 432 meters, it's the country's highest volcano. There are some nice hiking options nearby, and you may visit the volcano from San Jose or from the region of Orosi and Turrialba, we will talk about a little later. The Turrialba volcano is located next to Irasu, and for some years, uh, it regularly emits smoke and ash. We actually receive on our balconies in San Jose. That's why the National Park has been closed for several years. And you normally observe the Turrialba volcano from far when driving from San Jose to Turrialba or from its other side when you are picked up for a transfer to Tortuguero, most likely with small cloud uh, of smoke above the crater. When it comes to our beaches, uh, we have 1,290 kilometers of coastline on both coasts of the country, the Atlantic and the Pacific one. The Atlantic coast is divided into a northern and a southern part, whereas the northern coast is not good for swimming because of its strong riptides. This region is known for its jungle canals and the small village called Tortuguero. And many visitors start their round trip in Costa Rica with such a Tortuguero package. The southern Atlantic coast, however, offers many beautiful beaches suited for swimming um, around the two villages of Cahuita and Puerto Viejo. They offer lush tropical vegetation just behind the beaches and a colorful Afro-Caribbean way of life, which is part of the region's popularity. This coast is not as developed as the Pacific coast, However, there have been huge changes within the last years and comfortable and exclusive lodging is now also available in this area. On the northern Pacific coast, you find the main beaches, uh, the main uh, beach uh, hotels, many of them big resorts and chain hotels, which are actually less common in the rest of the country. A little bit more towards the south on the Nicoya Peninsula, you find again some less visited beaches and communities with smaller and yet quite exclusive boutique hotels. You reach these beaches uh, within an hour by ferry from the town of Punta Arenas. The central Pacific coast is the preferred coast for Costa Ricans to visit and therefore well developed over all the surroundings of Haco Beach, which is also famous for its ideal surfing conditions. And if we go further towards the south, we find the Marino Ballena National Park, which protects the coastline, including its wild and long beaches. Here is where you can observe whales in two seasons in the year, from August to October, and again from December to February. And in the extreme south, on the Osa Peninsula, next to the border to Panama, you find the country's natural treasure, the Corcovado National Park. And thanks to its remote location, you can still experience its incredible biodiversity during a walk inside or near the national park borders. So you can see there are many different beach options all along the country, 
and it's definitely best to exactly find out uh, your client's expectations before working on an itinerary. Another USP of Costa Rica is its protected areas, which cover more than 25% of the country's total surface. Here a picture from the Cabo Blanco nat Natural Reserve, which became one of the country's first officially protected areas in 1963. Since then, 30 national parks were added, the last one actually just last week, which is the island of San Lucas in the Gulf of Nicoya. Then we have 71 protected areas and eight biological reserves. This is a huge achievement as Costa Rica managed to increase its forested areas, whereas many other countries had to determine a decrease in their forest area. And this, of course, also happened thanks to ecotourism. And of course, people come to Costa Rica to discover our incredible flora and fauna. You find 5% of the world's biodiversity in Costa Rica, while the country only covers 0.03% of the Earth's surface. Uh, the different vegetation zones exist thanks to the many different microclimates we have all around the country because of this central mountain range I showed you at the beginning of the presentation. So you get to know different kinds of forests along a trip to Costa Rica and a huge number of tropical flowers and orchids. If we talk about animals, we have more than 230 species of mammals, more than 200 species of reptiles, more than 1,000 different butterflies, and more than 900 different birds. And all that together, this huge natural treasure, is obviously the main argument for a trip to Costa Rica. So we can see there is a lot of biodiversity to discover, but how can we do this? So here are the most popular activities in each of the most visited regions in our Costa Rica itineraries. Let's start in Puerto Viejo de Sarapiquí. This uh, little town is conveniently located between Tortuguero and the Arenal volcano. So it's easy to spend a night or two and discover the region's gems. It's the confluence of two rivers, Puerto Viejo and Sarapiquí. And it's an agricultural region and a region with some important protected areas such as the biological station of La Selva and the Tirimbina Reserve. It's a perfect stop to get to know some of the tropical fruits. Therefore, mostly, uh, we therefore mostly visit the Gomez family. Here is a photo of Don Rodolfo Gomez offering a piece of fresh and sweet pineapple. Everything is, gone, uh, is grown or organically on its farm. And he tells us how this is possible and what it takes. The Coco tour at the Tirimbina Reserve is second. It's very popular among both adults and children as it gives a lot of background information on history uh, and cocoa production while being totally interactive and offering a lot of tasting. As it is a river region, an easygoing boat tour for animal observation or some more active versions like a kayaking or a, canopy, a canoe, tour, canoe tour are also quite common in this area. For some more adrenaline, there are also some rapids to explore. There are, they are not that strong than on the Pacuare River, but at least class two to three, so perfectly fine for children from six years old. Next is La Fortuna and the Arenal region, especially rich in all kinds of outdoor activities. The number one activity is definitely the volcano hike to the ancient lava fields. This tour is commonly combined with a visit to one of the local hot springs. On that picture, you can see the Ecotermales hot springs with their natural pools with different temperatures. And uh, you may also book lunch or dinner at uh, the hot springs to extend your stay a little bit more. Another possible hike around the area is on the Mistico hanging bridges near the Arenal Lagoon. 
and horseback rides are also very popular. They normally pass by several private farms and also reach the lava fields. Normally you have the chance to refresh yourself in one of the cascades and then ride back. And finally there is the possibility of a transfer tour traveling from La Fortuna to Monteverde. If you're not driving yourself but need a transfer, you can choose this option. Um, clients are picked up at their hotel in La Fortuna, taken to the lagoon, and then they switch to a boat, cross the lake, obviously with beautiful views on the volcano, and on the other side, another bus waits for them and takes them up to Monteverde. This is a nice way to just shorten the transfer time and at the same time enjoy the nice volcano views from the lake. So very recommended this tour. And Monteverde is our next stop. It's one of the two major cloud forest areas of the country besides San Gerardo de Dota, uh, which is located in the mountains of the Cerro de la Muerte, more towards the south. Monteverde is about uh, 1,500 meters to 1,800 meters above sea level and also offers many activity options to enjoy the special mountain climate, often with cloudy skies, uh, some rays of sunlight coming in and of course significantly fresher temperatures. In Monteverde, the night walks are especially popular among the visitors, as you may observe many night active animals like this colorful frog, for instance. But also guided natural history walks during daytime are part of the most book tours in that area. You can do this in one of the private cloud forest reserves like the Monteverde, the Santa Elena or the Curicancha Reserve. All of them are privately owned, by the way. There are no national parks in Monteverde. There are also hanging bridges over here. We especially like the Selvatura hanging bridges that come together with that uh, thrilling canopy tour, uh, like the one of the photo. And there are even more attractions at the Selvatura park, like a hummingbird and a butterfly garden, as well as a reptile house. So you can easily spend the whole day at Selvatura. And Monteverde is also a coffee region, so you may take part in a coffee tour like Don Juan coffee tour we have on the picture. The next region I'd like to show you is the region of Orosi and Turrialba, southeast of our capital. And uh, we also count Cerro de la Muerte and its high valley San Gerardo de Dota as a part of this touristic region. That's why you can find these three white points on the map. You reach the region via the province of Cartago, where you may stop by at the Basilica Nuestra Señora de los Ángeles. And from there you get uh, to the small village of Orosi first, where you also find a nice church, actually the first Christian church built in Costa Rica. And this is the entrance door to the Tapanti National Park and to the Cachi Dam. And from there, you have several options to get to Turrialba. It's a very nice area for biking through coffee plantations and along the hillside with beautiful views on the green Orosi, Orosi Valley, as it is called. On the way towards Turrialba, you can observe the Irasu and the Turrialba volcano, and you pass by the only archaeological site of the country, the Guayaba, Guayabo monument. There is a well-known university for tropical uh, agriculture near uh, Turrialba, offering a well-sorted botanical garden and even bike tours, like the one you can see on the picture. And Turrialba is famous for its wide water rafting at Pacuara River, the put-in is uh, only some few kilometers outside the city and while rafting towards the town of Securis, you can see uh, on the shore the exclusive Pacuare Lodge. Hiking is also very common in that area of Orosi and Turrialba. However, this picture uh, is taken in the cloud forest of San Gerardo de Dota, which is located even higher than Monteverde. So it's even easier to spot the colorful Quetzal bird over there and it's actually the number one activity in San Gerardo de Dota 
bird watching with emphasis on the Quetzal bird. As a coastal region also offering many different activities, I can present the Central Pacific Coast with Manuel Antonio. Uh, here you find broad uh, mangrove forests as the Guacalillo or Isla Damas mangroves, where you can choose between a tranquil boat safari or a, a little bit more active kayak tour. The ones who drive along the Central Pacific Coast uh, almost do a mandatory stop on the bridge over the Tarkalis River, where you may observe some huge crocodiles taking a relaxed bath, bath in the sun. And when it comes to the Manuel Antonio National Park, many visitors book a guided walk to observe the animals living in the park. The park is closed on Mondays, by the way, so this is something to consider when planning a visit. And there are also some water activities in the ocean, like an ocean kayaking tour or a catamaran sunset tour, both especially impressive during the whale season from August to October or from December to February. So this was an overview on the most of the nature activities you may experience on a trip to Costa Rica. And with our, with our product line ARA experiences, we actually wanted to prove that Costa Rica has a lot more to offer than only nature. We want to focus on the ticos themselves, as the Costa Rican call themselves, their culture and gastronomy. And we don't want these tours to end like monologues. They should give a practical insight into daily life and get involved our visitors in the activities shown. We produce some nice videos on each experience and the product line as a whole in order to captivate both sellers and uh, our common clients. You can find these uh, videos on our website in the B2B section or on our YouTube channel. This is a map with the currently 10 locations where we offer our ARA experiences. Of course, they are chosen this way that hopefully in almost any itinerary there is some time or opportunity to include one or several of these cultural tours. It makes them more unique, more attractive and less comparable also in terms of package rates. So in San Jose, we offer a guided city walk starting at 10 at La Mercedes Church and walk uh, all the way to Barque España, where we end the tour at about 12 o'clock. We will pass by the central market, have a cup of coffee there at one of the traditional stands. Then we'll walk through the city center and hear a lot about history and culture of San Jose and the Ticos. And at the end, we will give a stamped postcard to each participant uh, in order to send some greetings home. In Turrialba, we recommend this especially authentic coffee tour. The plantation is one of the biggest in the country and the whole village actually lives on and with coffee. The harvest takes place between August and February each year. However, the tour is interesting the whole year through. There is also a beautiful waterfall on the property, which is part of the walk. And at the end, there is a coffee tasting to really learn how to smell and taste the coffee aroma professionally. The tour is offered twice a day, and you may get there by your rental car, or we can organize a transfer. Now let's drop towards the Atlantic coast, where we have two different experiences uh, you may enjoy from the village of Puerto Viejo de Limón. The first one is a Caribbean cooking class at the home of an Afro-Caribbean family. You may choose to book it for lunch or for dinner and then prepare your own Caribbean meal. And the second one is a visit at one of the villages of the Bribri tribe, one of the original cultures of Costa Rica. A shaman will show you a traditional ceremony and talk about the Bribri faith, their world vision, 
medical plans and retrials. And in a second part of the tour, the cocoa production is focused, which is still very important to the breweries. It's actually almost a one-day tour, including lunch, and you can book uh, you can book it with or without transportation from Puerto Viejo. Our next proposal is a homestay at a local family in Sarapiki. You cook and dine together with the family at their house, so you have a good op opportunity to share some time with them, ask your questions, and hear about their everyday life. And afterwards, you just spend the night at a guest room, have breakfast the following mo morning, and then continue your trip. In the Arenal region, we have two proposals. Spend some time with local children and even visit them at their school and do some volunteering work for the community. It's just a two to three hours tour, so no, not much time to think of a really big project, but a newly painted desk is something very appreciated and gives that type of opportunity we sometimes need to get into conversation with the locals and hear what they can tell us because that's actually the main uh, topic of that tour. So this is especially recommended for families who are looking for this kind of experience or insight and local contact. Near Monteverde, we visit a local farmer who grows coffee, sugar cane and bananas. And besides, he also runs marathons. So I'm sure he has a lot of stories to tell. Uh, and this makes that tour so interesting. You may arrive in your own rental car or book a transfer from Monteverde. On your way to the beaches of Tamarindo, Samara or Nosara, you might want to book a break. We offer a two or a four hours experience where you can live the Chorotega culture. See this kind of clay stove where they cook fantastic corn cookies or even visit a workshop where they produce the traditional marimba instrument. The two hours tour includes some coffee and the four hours tour comes additionally with lunch and a ride on the horse drawn carriage to explore the surroundings. So you can choose to visit that project on your way to the beach or your way from the beach back to San Jose. Now, if we go farther southwards, we get to the mountains behind the Manuel Antonio National Park. And there you find a small village in the middle of tropical forests, perfect for walking, have a bath in the river, crossing this extra large hanging bridge and find a totally different panorama from the touristic hotspot of Manuel Antonio. This is a very recommended a tour um, as a one day experience from and back to Manuel Antonio. And even more towards the south, we visit a women's initiative at one of the villages of the original Boruca tribe. Uh, they produce and wave cotton and paint the traditional Boruca masks. So this is also a very interesting visit on your way from Cerro de la Muerte downwards to the southern uh, coast or the other way around. Uh, it starts in the morning and it also includes some lunch. Yeah, and with this experience, we are at the end of our current list, but obviously it's our aim to extend the product line regularly. So you can always find some new options around the whole country. Now let's get to the specialties of ARA tours. What do I exactly refer to with this? It's about special interest tours we have been asked for for many years and therefore specialized in a way that we did a lot of research about the requirements for these interests. We looked for suitable products in Costa Rica and we also trained our sales team according to the different topics. So you can be sure that your potential clients who most possibly will also be a, an expert 
it receives valuable information, good travel recommendations, and a secure and successful operation. Part of these special interests is, of course, bird watching. In Costa Rica, we have about 10% of the worldwide existing bird species, more than 900 different ones. 600 of them live uh, permanently over here, 250 are migratory birds, and 100 species are regionally endemic, and we kind of share them with our neighbor countries, Nicaragua and Panama. You can see on the map that almost uh, the that the birding spots are spread almost around the whole country, but of course there are some hot spots um, that shouldn't be missing in any bird watching itinerary, and there are specialized hotels and lodges with exceptional resident guides. And our product platform, Latin Connect, we propose a two weeks individual bird watching tour in standard or comfort hotels and of course we also have very good birding guides who are ready to lead small groups or private tours. The next topic is hiking. In the national parks we normally find trails for a two hours hike normally with quite a low to medium difficulty. And for this special interest, we were looking for longer and more intense walks or hikes with uh, attractive and secure surroundings, of course, and if possible, also include this local culture experience in the hikes. So we came up with these four short packages. Near Turialba, we hike along the Pacuare River, visiting a very remote village where we spend two nights with the locals. It includes some tough hikes, but an extraordinary landscape around, opportunity to combine with a rafting tour, and a lot of cultural insights too. Cerro Ena is one of the highest mountains in the country on 3,132 meters above sea level. You spend the first night at the village of San Jeronimo and hike from there towards the peak. The second night is in a very simple mountain cabin up there from where you enjoy some views like the ones you see in the picture. Our Corcovado intense jungle track is totally focused this one on nature as it crosses the Corcovado National Park. First, first from the east to the west uh, where the Sirena Ranger Station is located in the heart of the National Park. There you stay two nights and get to know the surroundings of the ranger station before you cross towards the southern exit of the park at La Leona. This is really an excellent nature experience. And the last package is a multi-day trekking from the mountains towards the central Pacific coast, passing by some rural communi communities. This is again a mix of hiking and getting to know the rural Costa Rica. We propose a two, uh, 12 days, 11 nights self-drive hiking tour, combining some of these short packages. And of course, we can also offer uh, our experienced hiking guides for private or small group tours. When it comes to biking, we offer our own fleet of mountain and e-bikes for private or group tours. And we operate our Pura Vida e-bike bicycle tour about once per month and guaranteed from only two book persons. It's guided in three languages, English, Spanish and German at the same time. And clients may choose if they would like to ride a mountain or an e-bike. We made a nice video on that tour also and its main attractions and you can find that video on our website or on our YouTube channel. And last but not least, there are a lot of pure luxury experiences waiting for our clients here in Costa Rica. Wellness is a huge topic. Uh, there are a few but spectacular golf courses over here and uh, we've prepared some outstanding luxury packages under our brand selected moments. When it comes to wellness, 
many of the small boutique hotels offer breathtaking spas like this one at Amor Arenal with open spaces surrounded by pure nature and high-class treatments with exclusive natural ingredients. Food and gastronomy is also surprising over here. Just look at the colorful fruits and vegetables used in the local cuisine. And also yoga has developed a lot during the last years and many hotels and lodges have built stunning decks and offer high quality yoga teachers for their classes. And at the right, uh, you can see the fantastic hot springs you find mostly around the Arenal area. Uh, but also more towards the north northern region, for instance, at the thermal river Rio Perdido. And of course, we have some ready proposals on Latin Connect. You'll find our short round trip Pure Wellness at the Retreat, a perfect wellness starter package for a Costa Rica trip, and two wellness self-drive tours, Source of Nature and Costa Rica Wellness. In Costa Rica, there are six important golf courses. We have two of them in San Jose, Valle del Sol and Cariara, Cariari Country Club. And then we have one on the Central Pacific Coast, La Iguana, and three very nice courses on the Northern Pacific Coast. So we propose different itineraries combining programs for golfers and non-golfers, tours that combine golfing with the country's other highlights, and also a concentrated golf package of seven nights right on the North Pacific coast to specially play these three courses, uh, the ocean course at Peninsula Papagayo, uh, Reserve Conchal and Hacienda Pinilla golf course. Sure you've heard about our selected moments concept which also aims to give our clients a unique experience of the essence of Costa Rica. And for us, this means nature is definitely a major ingredient when it comes to lodging and touring. You can see uh, on all these pictures the importance of the green vegetation all around. Then the outstanding hospitality of the Costa Ricans uh, they will, it will be present uh, in non-guided tours or in guided round trips. Our guests will find sustainably operating hotels in their round trips. They will be surprised by the exceptional gastronomy and they will get these ARA experiences showing them through hands-on activities, the local culture and traditions. This is our luxury concept, uh, something more about software than hardware if you know what I mean. And on Latin Connect, you will find two of these selected moments proposals. We have one guided round trip, the spirit of the rainforest, and one individual tour with private transfers, dream destinations of Costa Rica. Both of them, of course, can be booked like this or adjusted to your client's wishes. And both of them include our selected moments service package, which I already mentioned last week, with some very special services before, during and after the trip. Yeah, this is actually the information I prepared for today a collection of all these experiences that wait for our common clients here in Costa Rica. Are there any questions? Let's have a look on the questions tool. For now, I can see any. Remember, there's always the possibility to send an email also afterwards. No. Well, in this case, just some more words about our sales team. We're still working at, from home. Actually, this worked out very well. And we are uh, now in the process of collecting many uh, descriptions, texts, pictures, GPS coordinates for our new offer tool, Baku, in order to send you uh, even more detailed and attractive offers from now on. So we are very happy to hear from you and we are very open to assist you in anything you need 
we can do trainings, we can show you Latin Connect, we can prepare new products, whatever you would like us to do, we are there, so just write us an email and we can see all that together. So in the meanwhile, stay safe. Thank you very much for your time and have a nice afternoon. Bye-bye.